The woman had took a chance. Everyone was talking about it. I think it grew the sport massively. To this day, the most amazing thing in my career. I think if you were to ask anyone who's ever experienced an 8am fitness session or any sort of session with me at that time of the day, I have a slight reputation and you never know what sort of mood you're gonna get. But you know, over, over the years, uh, I've learned to, to like it a little bit more. It'd be fascinating to see what Ben has today. He's always got loads of ideas and I've been working with him now for three and a half years. So there's never a dull moment with, with Ben. Not his finest hour. Now the cameras are, it'll be firing. Ready to go, <laughs> bring it on. Three, two, one, go. Good, strong push. Go on, go on, go on. As a high performing individual, he always wants to strive to be the best. He's building towards a really good place and understanding it going forward. So I think the results are showing the kind of work he's doing off the court, which us as a team are really impressed with. And also we know how badly he wants to strive to get better as well. I remember once I trained with Gordon. Uh, well, to be fair, it was a few years ago now. And I went up to Scotland and uh, his SNC coach is a bit of a beast. Yeah. And I don't even remember what the drill was. I think it was like a rolling, 30 second, but 20 meters sprint, something along the lines. By the time I didn't really do much fitness, and uh, I had to stop halfway through because I was gonna, was gonna throw up. It was a horrible feeling, and I went back to my mom. I was like, I was like, what's wrong with you? You look like you look, you look awful. I've just been doing some sprints, man. <laughs> Ever since, I think it scarred me. The week consists of pretty much double sessions from Monday to Friday. Two bounces. Ah. Nice shot. I'll travel on a Sunday evening to London. Uh, I've got a coach down there, Craig Allen, who we've been working with now for a year. Oh. And then a Wednesday evening, I'll come home and I'll do the same three days from Thursday, Friday, Saturday onwards in, in Norwich and, and replicate it back here. Nice <laughs> shot. Nice out. Very effective getting it out of the middle. That was really good. It's my best start to a season. Australia was such a momentous occasion. I can be so proud and confident of the way I stepped onto every match. The final was the great performance itself. To follow on and go into ABN AMRO, win that, get a, a trophy in, in America on my recent trip as well. You know, to have that sort of record, it's showing that I'm going in the right direction. It's showing my game and my mentality and my consistency is is a lot better because I think that I could, I'd argue that was probably one of my flaws in recent years was that level of consistency. So the fact that it's there, it's um, it's a good sign. Let's talk about last year then. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> To this day, the most amazing thing in my career. That to me was a turning point. I hadn't won any tournaments for a while, had been beaten quite convincingly in Roland Garros by Gustavo Fernandez. Court one, it's a big moment for him, for wheelchair tennis, and then for a British player to be in there and also be losing in the way that he was. I think it was probably a day he wanted to forget for a period. 6 2, 5 1 down. I just wanted the ground to swallow me up. I just wanted it to be over. But I was like, no, I've got to stick it out here. Oh, he spreaded the needle. And look at the reaction. The crowd had started to really get behind me and make some noise. And you could see and sense this belief in the ground and in myself. We call it the Alfie zone, kind of his flow state. He's probably not even taking in anything around him. That's when we know he's most dominant. There we go. Oh, he's got it. Sweet strike for Britain's Alfie Hugh. 
I managed to come out on tops in those games and then the match and you see it in just a celebration, like almost in disbelief over what's just happened. Two sets to one, two six, seven six, six four. Alfie Hewitt, the wheelchair British number one, into his maiden Wimbledon singles final. The support was incredible. I didn't know what the future will hold, so I tried just to enjoy every moment of it afterwards. My time working with Alfie, that's one of the best days. To go from, oh, it's going to be a tough conversation in a couple of minutes, to then going, what a comeback, phenomenal, and I think it grew the sport massively. I mean, everyone was talking about it. I was completely overwhelmed and blown away with you know, how many people had really tuned in. Wimbledon took a chance. They took a chance of putting us out there and going, okay, let's see what wheelchair tennis does. And I think all the other slams have gone, you know what, yeah, this, this works. Like, people want to watch it, people will turn up. I know people that are now taking up wheelchair tennis because they saw that match. Yeah, it was a breakthrough. Similar focuses this morning, opening up the court, but then also I want to look at you flattening out the forehand when you get an opportunity. As a coaching team, we're really trying to focus on the process, really starting to dig in deeper on how to play on grass, how to take its level to the next stages, because it is a completely different ball game on the grass courts. We get stronger and we get more powerful when it comes to the clay and, and the grass, because there's that resistance when we push. You know, on a hard court, we can push once or twice and the chair will just flow around the court. And we can use the momentum of that to carry us around in a rally. More so on grass as well. You push once and you stop dead. Funny enough, I'd never been to Wimbledon before playing there. It's a venue and it's a place I want to go to and go, this is what I'm all about. I actually struggled for, for many years when I first played at Wimbledon with dealing with that excitement. I'd be playing on a Thursday, but Monday night I'd be rolling around in bed because I couldn't sleep because I was just so excited for Thursday. Now I feel like I've come out of that period and I just see it as an exciting opportunity to play in front of home fans and maybe showcase the, the true capacity of what wheelchair tennis is all about. I think with Wimbledon, we're all in the same boat. Yeah. Feeling those feelings, we're all with you in that chair holding that racket, living every single shot with you. You do live every point. As every well. point. They're living at the side. I mean, my mum's screaming at me from, from mm -hmm. the stands. You know, she's just willing me on. And I'm like, hey, can you all just calm down a little bit? I need, I need focus here. Yeah. Um, but I, it, it definitely helps, you know, it definitely helps by having you guys and you know, everyone else there. It's like you've got another person in your corner. I don't store much in my cupboards because because my mum cooks all your meals. No, you. no, no. We don't. I don't spend uh, a lot of time here, no. so um, it's something that I can just pick up from the from the shop and make quite easy. Scrambled eggs, spinach. It's Popeye's favourite. It's got enough enough in to keep ticking for a few hours. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Food for champions. It's Alfie Hewitt, who's halfway to securing his first Wimbledon wheelchair singles title. When I look at last year, the impact that it had, I do believe that it was bigger than, than me winning it. The world number one snatches the second set. Yeah, a really good height and length from Cunieda. It's a championship point for Cunieda. Oh, oh my word. And he oh. just needs the one. 10-5 in the third set match tiebreak. It doesn't get much closer, and the fact that I could still go out there against someone like Shingo Kineda, who is a legend of the sport. Okay, I didn't win it, but I turned up. I was two points away from winning match point. My mentality ever since then, my resilience has, has been way stronger. Set 
for anyone who is in a job that requires traveling and being away from home, it's important to make sure that when you do come back to that hub that you can relax and you can switch off from, from all the stresses. score now, you specifically have to thank me when you win at Wimbledon. Well, because specifically. Of, because of right, in the middle of the court, you know, when they come up, Claire Balding comes up to you at the end, she says, well done, Alfie, you've won Wimbledon. All right, mate, you'll be talking you about this. Yep. Thank you to Nathan, Nathan Mills, Nathan very specifically Nathan Mills. Mills. Right. instrumental. Top of my list. <laughs> Be out for the window. Wimbledon won this year. That's the that's the aim. That is that's the aim. aim. Yeah, good boy. Take care. Yeah, see ya. See ya. I think it's only fitting that it would be Wimbledon singles to complete the Grand Slam. It's one that I've always dreamt of winning ever since I started playing at Wimbledon and even beforehand. I'll have family there. I'll have everyone behind me. There's no other way I'd want it. I think I'm a better player this year. I think my mentality is stronger this year. I also am very aware that there's a lot of players that also want it just as much as me. I think he has confidence now going forwards and knowing that there's no reason why he can't do it. Whether it's this year, next year, it will happen, but it's just on his racket now. I will enjoy every moment I'm out there playing and if at the end of it there's a singles and obviously a doubles trophy as well. I am gonna be one happy man, <laughs> that's for sure.